Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Indian security forces neutralize park back terrorists in Jammu and Kashmir. Enforced disappearances are on the rise in Pakistan's Balochistan province. And fear and uncertainty rules the lives of Afghans. Let's start the show with India's Jammu and Kashmir, where the Indian security forces have launched a series of counter-terrorism operations to demolish the core web of Pakistan-aided terrorism in the region. In the latest operation, security forces neutralized five Lashkar terrorists in separate encounters, including a terrorist, Jan Mohammad, who was involved in the targeted killing of a bank manager earlier this month. A report. The peace and development in Jammu and Kashmir frustrates Pakistan and it makes all possible efforts to unleash chaos and violence in the region. However, the Indian security forces are carrying out a series of operations to uproot the network of park back terrorism from Jammu and Kashmir. Recently, terror groups operating in the valley have received a huge setback. In the latest operation, security forces neutralized two lashkar e taiba terrorists in Shopian district. One of the slain ultras was involved in the targeted killing of a bank manager in Kulgam earlier this month. The terrorists killed in the encounter were identified as Jan Muhammad and his associate Tufail Gunai. Sopian mein jo encounter hui hai to jaisa hum sab jante hai ki 2 June uh, isi mahina mein jo bank manager the uh, Vijay Kumar sahab us pe attack hua tha to jab uska CCTV footage ko hum log analysis kiye the to jo chehra mil raha tha John Mohammad Lon jo Sopian ke terrorist hai uske parents ko bulaye parents ne confirm kar diya ki yahi chehra hai uske beta hai fir uska parents ne bataya khas ke father ne ki pichle 2 mahina se kafi ye retitalize se baat karta tha raat bhar bhar online chatting karte rehta tha और उसका भाई बोला है कि ये जो आविद रमजान है एलईडी कमांडर सोपन के उसके साथ चलता है बीच-बीच में तो अटैक करने के बाद ये अटैक मिसिंग हो गया घर से एक्टिव हो गया तब से उसके पीछे हम लगे हुए थे इसको इन्फॉर्मेशन नेटवर्क को स्ट्रांग कर रहे थे क्या ह्यूमन इंटो हो टेक इंट हो तो कल जब खबर पक्का हो गई तो पुलिस आर्मी के कोर्डन डाल दे कोर्डन डालते ही फायरिंग से हो गया और जो रात में 3 बजे दोनों लश्कर तेवा के टेरिस्ट मारे गए Indian armed forces have lately intensified their efforts to decimate terrorism from the valley and the terrorist groups like Lashkar-e-Taiba and Jaish-e Mohammed have been pushed to the brink of extinction. Major operations in the last few days have resulted in the killing of several park back terrorists. Many others have also been apprehended. According to a recent report by Jammu and Kashmir police, 100 terrorists have been neutralized. in Kashmir Valley this year just a few days back security forces gunned down five elite terrorists in separate encounters in Indian Kashmir including a terrorist Adil Pare who was wanted in recent killings of two police personnel Pare was planning an attack on Amarnath Yatra this year based on an input regarding movement of a terrorist at Kreshbal Palpura area in the outskirts of Srinagar A special small team of Srinagar police was deputed for search. During the searches, the hidden terrorist fired upon the police team, which was retaliated, leading to a brief chance encounter. जब फर्ट शुरू किया, the terrorist ने हमारे party पे fire किया, तो chance encounter हो गया start, जिसमें आदिल परे मारा गया. ये आदिल परे वही है, जो last year है. सितंबर में गंधर्व डिस्ट्रिक्ट में एक्टिव हुआ था इसके साथ एक आबिद खान भी था दोनों एक ही गांव का था और लास्ट ईयर अक्टूबर में और सैडर लेबर पर अटैक किया था कुछ फिल्म पर अटैक किया था और इस साल लास्ट मंथ मई में दो पुलिस वाले पर अटैक किया था जिसमें दोनों शहीद हो गए थे उसकी एक छोटी नौ साल की बची थी वो भी जख्मी हो गई तो आदिल परे का मार जाना सीनियर पुलिस के लिए कामयाब एक बात है द प्रिवेलिंग पीस एंड डेवलपमेंट हैज फ्रस्ट्रेटेड पाकिस्तान एंड नाउ इट इज ट्राइंग ऑल पॉसिबल मींस to unleash chaos and violence in the region but to islamabad's much amazement and shock all the attempted terror activities have fallen flat owing to the alert indian government and its security forces
India's UN has expressed its concern about the discriminatory inferior status accorded to women in the Afghan society, which has adversely impacted the education of girls in the war-torn country. While underlining the need for the Security Council to focus its attention on the consequences of terrorism on the rights of women. Take a look. The 15th regular session of the UN was held on June 13 and will last until July 8. Participants discussed the situation of women around the globe and voiced deep concerns about Afghan women's status. India has also expressed its concern about the discriminatory inferior status accorded to women in the Afghan society, which has adversely impacted the education of girls in the war-torn country. Addressing the UN Security Council open debate on women and peace and security, India's permanent representative to the UN, Ambassador T.S. Tirumurthy, said discriminatory social and political structures have made violence against women systematic and deeply entrenched, making women easy targets in situations of armed conflict. Terrorism and violent extremism continues to be the biggest violator of human rights and a persistent threat to global peace and security. Needless to say, women and girls invariably suffer disproportionately by terror acts. It deserves strong condemnation and call for adoption of a zero-tolerance approach. The Council must focus its attention on the consequences of terrorism on the rights of women. The deteriorating condition of women in Afghan society is not only a matter of concern for world leaders. There are other major issues also. The recent 27-page report of the monitoring team under Taliban Sanctions Committee covering the period since the capture of Afghanistan by Taliban reveals worrisome threats not only to India but to others, especially in the region. There are three dimensions in the report. First is the increased presence of anti-India terrorist outfits in Afghanistan after August 2021, including Al-Qaeda in Indian subcontinent, jaish e mohammad and lashkar e taiba Second is the rising outflow of narcotics from that country. The report indicates that smuggling of the Afghan origin drugs have increased significantly in the second half of 2021, increased up to 50%. The spiraling cases of drug consignments detected in India coming directly or indirectly from Afghanistan corroborate this fact. Third is more disturbing. Taliban's victory in Afghanistan has inspired terrorists around the world. The report indicates that Pak-based anti-India terrorist outfits have now increased training camps in Afghanistan. The Indian envoy has also emphasized that terrorism and violent extremism continues to be the biggest violator of human rights and a persistent threat to global peace and security. In this regard, it is important that we factor in growing concerns emanating from the misuse of new and critical technologies. Internet and social media networks have the potential to augment women's voice and increase their participation. However, extremist groups and terrorists have increased, increasingly exploited these tools to the detriment of women. They have threatened women who are active in public life, muzzled their voices amplified discriminatory ideas and promoted violent radicalization. To counter such misuse, we require a non-discriminatory and collective effort through a whole-of-society approach. If Taliban-ruled Afghanistan is again turning into an exporter of terror, it is in part because of the collapse of its economy and law and order. Security across the world is virtually non-existent. An uptick in violence from anti-Taliban attacks by a desperate but growing resistance to suicide attacks targeting ethnic minorities like Hazaras indicates the Islamists are fast losing whatever governing grip they might have had. Militancy is striving, much of it deployed to geopolitical ends. The Taliban's inability to govern has effectively provided a carte blanche for terrorist groups to operate in and from Afghanistan's territory. Enforced disappearances targeting students, activists, journalists and human rights defenders continue relentlessly in Pakistan.
particularly in the southwestern province of Balochistan. People are wrenched away from their loved ones by state officials or others acting on their behalf, placing them outside the protection of the law. The authorities then deny the person is in their custody or refuse to say where they are. A report. Doda Elahi and Gamshad Baloch are the students of Philosophy Department in Karachi University who were taken away from their home on June 7 and their whereabouts were unknown since then. Recently, siblings of Doda tweeted that their brother and his friend had been released. The development came a day after relatives, activists and friends of two students were forcefully dispersed by police and 28 of them were arrested from outside the main gate of the Sindh Assembly in Karachi. They were there to protest against the pair's arrests. The demonstrators had camped out outside the Karachi Press Club for the last four days. The police action was widely condemned as footage emerged of security personnel dragging peaceful protesters and stuffing them in police vans. Many protesting women had also gathered near the Sindh Assembly where they were dragged by Sindh police before taking them away. यहाँ पे बलोच औरतों को सड़कों पे डंडे मार के भगाने की कोशिश की गई, जो सिर्फ अपने प्यारों की तस्वीर उठा के सिर्फ कह रही थी कि हमें इतना बता दो कि हमारे बच्चे जिंदा हैं कि मर गए हैं। ये माँ कितने सालों से अपने बच्चे की पिक्चर लेके कराची प्रेस क्लब के सामने बैठी है कि मुझे इतना बता दो कि मेरा बच्चा जिंदा है कि मर गया है। ये है पाकिस्तान में एथनिक एंड रिलिजियस माइनॉरिटीज की सूरत याल। Cases of enforced disappearances are endemic to Pakistan. Many youths and university students are still missing in the country. Experts believe that the missing persons may be dead or they may be interned locked in some detention centers of dubious legality. According to the Commission of Inquiry on Enforced Disappearances, more than 7,000 enforced disappearances occurred in Pakistan since 2011 with over 700 enforced disappearances in 2019 alone. Such kind of disappearances in Pakistan are mainly based on the victim's ethnic and religious backgrounds. An area in Pakistan where this becomes alarmingly clear is the province of Balochistan, with the remarkable rise of enforced disappearance cases. While thousands of Baloch have been abducted and disappeared since its illegal occupation, Hundreds of others have been eliminated in the line of Pakistan's kill and dump policy. It is a tool by the Pakistani state to silence the oppressed people of the poor province. Families of the disappeared people suffer significant harm. They live with continuous uncertainty about the fate or whereabouts of their loved ones. Some of these missing persons' relatives have passed away with the pain and suffering in their chests, but their loved ones have never returned back to them and they died waiting. Orton ki behurmati ki jati hai, Punjabi rangers gharo mein ghus ke joh haal karti hai, aur aisa kaam inho ne dhanda banaya hua hai ke jab koi rasta rasta mein ladka ja raha hai, utha ke lege, pata hai ke gharib hai, iske pichhe koi aane wala nahi, ab uske maa baap aayenge, maa baap se najais chizhen karwate hai, अगर एक मिसाल है कोई बेवा है उसका बच्चा है तो वो बेवा का रेप तक कर लेते हैं। Enforced disappearances have been a long stain on Pakistan's human rights record. Despite the pledges of successive governments to criminalize the practice, there has been a very slow movement on legislation, which is equal to nothing, while people continue to be forcibly disappeared with impunity. The Pakistani establishment is now practicing the method of enforced disappearance in abroad on the Baloch diaspora as well. Pakistan generals are running a campaign of targeted killings of the Baloch diaspora and there is a pattern to prove it with suspicious deaths of prominent Baloch personalities. The army and intelligence agencies in Pakistan should immediately put an end to this aberrant practice that has caused indelible pain 
to hundreds of families in the country over the past two decades. Afghanistan has been witnessing spate of attacks in the past few weeks. Scores of Afghan civilians have been killed in bomb blasts, some of which have been claimed by the Islamic State. On June 12th, another terror attack strikes the country, this time in a mine blast in Asadabad city, which lies in the center of the Kunar province. An explosion took place on a Taliban range of vehicles. One Taliban member has been killed and six others injured. A report. Bombings have increased recently in Afghanistan as the Taliban marks almost a year since seizing power in August 2021. Recently, on June 12, in Asadabad city of Konar province, a massive explosion detonated a mine planted in a vehicle of Taliban forces. A Taliban member was killed and six others, including a civilian, were injured in the blast. The explosion was said to have targeted a former Ranger Security Forces vehicle, which is now in the hands of the Taliban. No group or individual has taken responsibility for the attack. Meanwhile, a bomb exploded on a minibus in the Afghan capital. This incident also resulted in the killing of four people while injuring several others. Of course, the Taliban will claim that, you know, uh, they're going to be, the country will be more secure when they take over. But logically, I think all of us knew that this was impossible. When you've got a fundamentally a disaggregated guerrilla warfare organization with several factions, uh, heavily armed and much more armed since their last seat in power, it was only very obvious that, you know, they could never bring stability. Afghanistan is destroyed as a society. Uh, this is what, you know, uh, 30, 40 years of constant warfare are going to do to you. A heavily armed, heavily uh, uh, disunited society uh, with a guerrilla, essentially guerrilla warriors at the top is never going to be a stable one and this is going to continue. This is the new normal. I think everybody should get used to it. The war-torn country has witnessed a series of terror attacks staged by the Islamic State group in the last few weeks. Just before Eid, a powerful explosion killed more than 50 worshippers at a mosque located in the west of Kabul. Attacks against civilians targeting ethnic and religious minorities represent a disturbing trend in Afghanistan. The Taliban claim they have secured the country since taking power in August and largely eliminated the Islamic State's local offshoot. But international officials say the risk of resurgence in terrorism remains in Afghanistan. Many analysts believe these attacks are the result of the irresponsible withdrawal of US troops last year, which promised to restore peace for the Afghan people. The withdrawal of the US is only partially responsible for this, you see. Uh, it, 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 the, uh, the root cause starts off much earlier from the Afghan Jihad against the Soviets, the way it was fought, the arming of society in general, the radicalization of society because of, you know, this instilling this caliber of Jihad, uh, layered on top of the fact that Afghan society was almost always a very, uh, you know, unurban pastoral society, which was always prone to violence. This violence is not new. Uh, what's new to it is you've essentially taken a feudal system, taught them very modern guerrilla tactics, armed them with very modern weapons like shoulder fire weapons which are causing havoc in, uh, to Russian troops in Ukraine, uh, you know, uh, both anti-aircraft and anti-tank. This was bound to happen. So, you know, I won't say the American withdrawal is the root cause. It's just one in a long string of disappointments. The roots go back much, much earlier. On one hand, Afghanistan faces an endless threat of terrorism. On the other hand, the country finds itself gripped by the severe restrictions imposed by the Taliban. The hardliners deprived millions of Afghan women of their rights to education, ousted tens of thousands of women from jobs and banned women's business and all sorts of activism. Today, they have crushed the women of Afghanistan 
and have plunged them into dark ages again. The Afghan woman has now lost even the right to life. Not only are women in Afghanistan suffering, but more than 90% of Afghans have been facing a shortage of food. For them, their next meal is a matter of faith. People in Afghanistan had dreamt of peace and an end to conflicts to improve their situation, but not at the cost of losing the last 20 years of achievements. It seems that forever war in Afghanistan is nowhere near its end. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra, signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.